replacing the uh, double float switch here for the auxiliary pump and the low fuel shutoff. Uh, the Army Technical Manual, TM 9-6115-641-24P. Uh, page 63 starts the exploded view for the fuel system. Uh, probably should have started the video with this, but maybe I could splice it up at the beginning. First step will be to remove these 5 16 screws, the ones that I'm pointing to. And then along the bottom, you have a half inch bolt and on the underside there's a half inch nut. Um, you can see there's a bunch missing because I already have had this off to do some work. Um, the entire filler neck, cap, auxiliary fuel line and stuff stays in place. All right, I got all the hardware removed. And if you look at it, it's sort of slipped up underneath this bigger panel along the top and then also at the bottom here. This one was a little damaged at the bottom already, but if you just kind of yank down, then it just pops out. Set it off to the side. Once you got it open, this right here is going to be what you're changing. All right. Might see a couple things in here that look different from yours because I've already change this out that's in a different video pre loosened a couple things but best I found for taking these out is this is your fuel line that's this is your auxiliary fuel pump uh, get this out of the way Probably gonna be some fuel that drips out of it like that and then all these little connectors also disconnect them just to get them out of the way Disconnected all these connectors. I uh, made the mark. This is going to be critical. Although there's only one way that this will fasten down anyway. But And then I use a little stubby Phillips to loosen them and take it off. Alright, I got all the screws out. Now taking this thing out is a little tricky because it's actually sort of like a Z shape on the inside. Um... And doing it one hand is going to be even more tricky, but you pull it straight up. And you'll see that first float. Then I'm rotating it clockwise as I come out, get that first bend. And then continue to rotate clockwise and get that second float. I'm sorry, this is terrible recording. And there it is. Now, now what I can show you with this one, let me get the other one to compare. Here's your information. It's a switch liquid level, part number 88-20481. The NSN is this one, 6680-01-4. Four five zero dash six three three zero. Got this as a brand new part. It was like forty bucks, and here it is. Now, there's some differences, and I believe they're improvements. Um, as I started to show you, you see there's a little. It actually fell out. Uh, more more stuff to fish out of my tank, but the way this works is there's little metal pieces inside this foam float that works with magnets in here. And that's how it signals as it goes up and down. Your bottom float is your emergency shutoff. Your top float is for your auxiliary fuel. So when this gets down to here, it'll signal your auxiliary fuel pump to kick in. If you have a line hooked up here and you have it on auxiliary and run up front. When this comes down, your low fuel shutoff light will come on and the generator will shut down. That's the reason why I needed to replace this is even with the fuel level being full with that piece missing, it wasn't signaling. And apparently this erosion is a very common problem with these.
uh, no sense for the $40 and trying to fix it and having a huge problem. Um, now with this new one, these are not foam, these are polymer. So that will probably eliminate the erosion problem. Up top, this is a polymer as well. Uh, rest of it still appears to be aluminum, same hookup. Uh, the military part does not come with a gasket, um, which sucks because now I'm at this part in the project and I don't have a gasket. When I replaced the fuel sender unit, it came with a gasket. So I'm going to stop right now. All right, I put the gasket the way it's supposed to be. Uh, it's actually a used gasket. I do not recommend doing that. Get a new one, but I'm trying to finish this right now. And if I need to take it off and do it again, I will. I put my tick mark on here, similar to like I did on that one before I took it off. And I'm gonna start fishing this in. And doing it one-handed, like taking it out is gonna be fun, but I've done this a couple of times. Hold that float up since that float is a little bigger. There we go. It's in. Uh, all right, I need my other hand, but just line that up. All right, what I'm going to need to do to get these holes to line up properly, and I've already loosened it a little bit, is this is going to be terrible to show you, but this nut. I've already got it loose, but when you loosen it, it allows this shaft to go up and down. So it's hanging up on something inside the tank, so I'm just gonna raise it and snug it down so that way I can rotate this easier. And I'll show you how to readjust it once we get farther along. All right, just tighten up the screws. Um, before I go any farther, I'm gonna leave you some notes, uh, mistakes I made, again, the gasket. Um, if this used gasket I put on ends up leaking, I'm gonna go order them. Don't have a part number for you, but it's pretty universal. If you put in five hole fuel sender gasket on the Google machine or eBay, Amazon, whatever, um, they're like six bucks, if that. Uh, and they make them in cork and Viton. Uh, the cork will probably work fine for diesel. I'd go with that. And then the other dumb dumb thing I did, and part of it is because i am got this pulled in the garage, so what I should have did is hooked this up and tested it to make sure it worked fully. Um, you know, plug this back in the way it should have been, uh, started the generator, and I'll use this old one as an example of what you should have did, because this is how I tested this one. Plug it in, you hit, um, get it started, make sure that this float is up, and then put it down, and it should shut right off, and when you go up to the control panel, the no fuel light right here would be illuminate, uh, uh, it's too hot out, it's 100 degrees say. Um, your low fuel light will be on and you'll have to move this back to off and then back. And then the other thing that you would do is put this float up and this float down like it is here and when you go to start it, Well, you wouldn't even need to start it. You could just go to the prime and run auxiliary fuel. And then you can check and see if this turns on. Two mistakes I made. Don't make them myself. Uh, hopefully I don't kick myself in the butt. Keep going here. But anyways, from this point, you tested it and it's good. All you got to do is hook these back up. Put your fuel line back in that you removed originally to get in here and put your panel on. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I got a couple other things to do in here. 
Now to adjust this. Swing it back and forth and make sure it's not hitting anything. It's resting on the bottom of the tank right now. Raise it up about a quarter inch. Can't really see what I'm doing right here. And then you're gonna use a wrench and hold this from rotating to make sure it's not obstructed. Can't do that holding the phone. Um, you might actually wanna bring it down a little bit. I think in the technical manual, it says it needs to be like a 16th from the bottom, but you can use your judgment on that one. One last thing I should have noted for the fuel gauge sender unit, uh, Army Technical Man Ugh. Army Technical Manual. It's TM 9-6115-641-24 Papa or P. Um, Google this, you could download it. Page 63 is where it starts and I believe it goes for four pages. It's an exploded view of the the, the fuel system. Page one is of this, and then page two goes to where the pump and the filter is on the other side. Each one is labeled. It gives you part numbers for you to reference. Um, yeah, I probably should have put that at the beginning of the video.